Hi, my name is Jason. Welcome to Founder of the Day. Let's talk about the American Revolution. Today I'm going to talk about something that every fan of history always ends up asking themselves, and that is, who was the most important founder of the United States? Now I know what you're thinking. I spend my free time writing about random, obscure founding parents of the United States, so you probably expect me to say someone outlandish, but this is a new YouTube channel, so I'm going to start closer to the beginning. Uh, in my opinion, one of the, the most important founding father is one of what I like to call the Big Six. The Big Six are the names you're going to get if you ask the average American who named three founding fathers. You will hear one of these six names. Washington, Adams, Jefferson, Franklin, Madison, Hamilton. So, that pretty quickly narrows it down. Now, unfortunately for Madison and Hamilton, while they both played humongous roles, and I don't mean to diminish them, they did both come in a little bit late to the game when it comes to really creating the United States. Yes, Hamilton played an important role in the war, but even at that time, he was a lower level. You know, he was an aide-de-camp. He wasn't a major general. Um, uh, and, and Madison, of course, would last a lot longer, not only outlive Hamilton, but uh, last a lot longer being an important later president. And they are humongous figures in the history of this nation. But I don't think they make the cut. And I would also say that although Thomas Jefferson, and though much underappreciated until about 10, 15 years ago when there were several Adams biographies came out, um, Adams and Jefferson were both appreciated in their day and, and nowadays, at least in my life, very much are. But I think even they are topped out by two people. And that is Benjamin Franklin and George Washington. So the question becomes, how do we consider who was more important? So we'll start with Franklin because he was older. What's really interesting about Franklin, the difference between Franklin and Washington, in my opinion, is I like to call Franklin the first American. And I like to call George Washington the first citizen, which is both maybe phrases you've heard before. Now, Washington was the first American because he was the first self, I'm sorry, Franklin was the first American. He was the first self-made man. He came from very little. I mean, he did have the fortune to have an older brother who owned a printing press, so he was able to learn how to run a press and write at that point. But then he ran away at, at 16, I believe he was, uh, and pulled himself up by his bootstraps, where it was it 50 years later when the American Revolution breaks out. I mean, this guy had already started uh, the Pony Express. Uh, not the Pony Express, but that he was uh, in charge of the Postal Service. Pardon me, Pony Express was later on coming on to the Civil War. But he did start the mail system in the United States. He also not only had publishing companies in uh, Philadelphia, but he was publishing across the colonies. He had basically franchised out several printing presses. So if it weren't for just that alone, then the American Revolution would have been very difficult because communication would have been very difficult. And yeah, sure, when Massachusetts started fighting a war, it would have gotten New Hampshire and Connecticut, Rhode Island on its side, but Virginia, let alone South Carolina and Georgia, I mean, that's a, it's a bold move. You add on to that that Franklin um, not only started so many different organizations, the first <laughs> subscription library, which we now take for granted, public fire departments, and hospitals, which we now take for granted. He helped invest in, in, in upper education as well as local education. Uh, uh, what we would today call philanthropist in many means. And then on top of that, his scientific endeavors. Like we have the word electron. We use electricity today, not just because Franklin had a kite and a key, but because he invented the word electron. And, and one of the reasons he was so important, why he had to leave America during the war and go to France, is because the people of France already knew him as the man who tamed lightning. Because he put lightning rods up on his, on his post. When he arrived, they had already uh, they put lightning rods on churches. When he arrived, his image was already all over France on plates and necklace lockets and, and, and wallpaper and everything you could think of. He was, he, and you know, yes, he of course wore the hat, the, the coonskin hat, and played up the fact that he was just a rural country bumpkin, but even though he was very, very much worldly. Um, and, and in a way, he was the, uh, uh, the epitome of what it would eventually mean to be an American. 
was defined by Benjamin Franklin. The fact that anyone can make it, if you just work hard enough, and you're smart enough, and sometimes sneaky enough, and you have the right way with words enough, you can make it in America. And, and he was the epitome of what many of the founders wanted America to be. Because keep in mind, Franklin was older than most of these people. I mean, by the time Washington was born, Franklin was going on 25 and already starting his printing press. So not only did Washington grow up reading Poor Richard's Almanac and, and reading and getting information through Franklin Press, all of them did. John Adams knew Poor Richard very well. Uh, so when they actually met this man, it was it's like meeting your hero if you're if you're uh, I don't know um, a fan of the Beatles, and you meet Paul McCartney. Except Paul McCartney also was a scientist <laughs> and and did many many other things that you don't usually get. So so Franklin is very very high on the list of most important founders. Of course, signing the Declaration of Independence, and of course, also being at the uh, Constitutional Convention. But in my personal opinion, he is only number two when it comes to most important. The most important is the first citizen, the first president, George Washington. Now, unlike Franklin, who did so many, so many, so many things, that he deserves to be so high on this list. Uh, Washington never... It's what Washington didn't do that makes him so important. Yeah, Washington grew up trying to get ahead in Virginia society and make a lot of money and get a big plantation as wealthy Virginians were wont to do. But what, what Washington did that made him so special, there were two important things. First of all, when he was chosen as general, yeah, he showed up in his uniform to the Second Continental Congress because he knew they'd be handing out some commissions. Now, it's very... It is questionable whether he thought he would be appointed commander-in-chief. There's nothing... We can't really say for sure that he went in knowing that. Probably he was a little surprised because there were so many former British officers who had moved to Virginia after the French and Indian War. And not just Virginia, parts of Pennsylvania. I mean, you have, like, um, uh, Montgomery moves to New York and things like that. So it's not just Virginia. But there were a lot of very highly qualified officers, as opposed to Washington, who, during the French and Indian War, he, like, accidentally started it <laughs> and, you know, didn't do so hot for the whole thing. Um, but... You know, the men in the room, notably John Adams, kind of called an audible and said, well, we need a Virginian, and he's here to accept, and he's in the uniform. Um, not to downplay who Washington was by any means. Uh, the point is that unlike Adams, who had made such a name for himself in so many areas, Washington was fairly lesser known at the time um, outside of Virginia. But... George Washington goes, he fights the war, he gets some very good fortune and wins the war, because it was close at times. Um, and then, while they're in Newburgh, yes, the, the Newburgh conspiracy. They're in Newburgh, waiting for the, the war's over, but they're waiting for the peace treaty to come through, and for the British to evacuate New York City, because once the British are out of New York City, they're gone, and we've officially won. And the, in very brief, the Newburgh conspiracy was when most of the generals basically said, these dudes who have been sitting in Philadelphia for eight years while we're fighting a war, they're not paying us. And and worse, they want to get rid of the army. And, and what are we going to do? We're soldiers. Like, what are we going to do without an army or without pay? And, and, and several other grievances. <laughs> and they basically said, hey, why don't we just march on the Capitol and uh, install... Washington as whatever he wants. He could be president. He could be dictator. If he's king, I mean, it's not really what we're going for. We're fighting for a republic. But, you know, maybe president for life. Something like that. You know, maybe. Uh, and Washington famously walked into the room 
and everyone was like, ah, ah, die, ah, he's here. What is, he, what is he doing here? What is he doing here? What is he doing here? And he got up and famously looked at his piece of paper and uh, a letter written to them from Congress and stared at it and he stopped and he said, uh, gentlemen, you'll permit me to wear my spectacles because I've grown not only old but nearly blind in service of my country. Um, I'm paraphrasing, but something to that effect. I'm not great at quips. Um, and it was the first time any of these men had seen their commander-in-chief show weakness by putting on his glasses. And most of the men in the room openly weeped because they were so embarrassed that they had turned against their Republican ideals. Although, not Timothy Pickering. Let's give Timothy Pickering some credit. He was in the room like, what do you mean? That's all it took? He said to put on some glasses, and we're all going to stop now. We just need to put on some glasses. Come on. Henry? No. Um, but what's so important about this and why it makes Washington so important is he could have been king. He could have been dictator 15 years before Napoleon. And instead, he said, no, thank you. He went to Philadelphia and resigned his commission, and he went home for Christmas. And it is an unbelievable act of selflessness to literally say, you want me to take all the power you have? No, thank you. Fifteen years later, George Washington is finishing his second term as president. And he's expected by a lot of people, especially the Federalists, to run again. And, and he decides to retire again. He says, no thanks. Two terms is enough. And we learn in grade school that, you know, Washington set a lot of precedents as president. And one of them was two terms. And, and of course, if you're watching this, you're a history nerd, you probably remember that it would be 150, 60 something years until Franklin Delano Roosevelt would spend more than two terms as president. And shortly after that, we amended the Constitution to be like, no, no, just two terms. But what's so important about Washington's retirement, and this is often overlooked, Washington died less than two years later. So had Washington run for a third term, he would have died in office. And the precedent would have been, you stay there till you die, or are elected out once every four years. But we would have had a lot more presidents staying in office a lot longer time. And in my opinion, that's almost as important, if not more important, than when Washington resigned as commander-in-chief of the army. In my opinion, that's the most important precedent ever set in the United States because it's what defined us as a republic as opposed to any other form of government that we could have changed into. And, and I'm not, I don't like to talk about modern politics, so don't, you, know, you can leave comments about what you think the current government might be, but we, the republic we became largely rests on the shoulders of one man, and it is George Washington. And I don't like to talk about great man history. I don't like giving credit to one person. I write a web page about all the hundreds of people we forget to give credit to, so please don't come at me like that. But in summation, in my personal opinion, the most important founder of the United States was George Washington. Now, if you agree with me, or especially if you disagree with me, feel free to leave a comment in the bottom. Tell me who you think, who you think is more important, who had a greater effect on the foundation of this country. I love to hear from it. I'll comment back. This is a new channel. I only have like 20 subscribers, so we'll see. Hopefully this time tomorrow we'll get up to 30. Uh, so definitely, if you, you haven't subscribed, hit the like button, because that'll help more people see the video, and, and subscribe so that you can see when I put out more stuff. Or don't, if you think this was a waste of time. I certainly hope it wasn't. Uh, you can also feel free to go to founderoftheday.com if you'd like to read more. I have hundreds of articles I've written in the last few years talking about the, not the big six, the everyone else. So, Jay Andrews saying goodnight, and I will see you tomorrow.